Welcome to the Find My New Life podcast. I'm Christopher Lapine, spiritual liberation author and speaker. This podcast brings you inspiration, hope, and answers for how to live a modern, God-centered spiritual life. It will help you have a more direct, deeper experience of God, find more happiness, and live your incredible God-given destiny. You can find all my podcasts, as well as videos, books, and more at findmynewlife.com. So, let's get started with today's show. Hi, welcome. This is Chris. This is the podcast for February the 4th, 2023, the sixth podcast of the year. Finding Jesus Without Christianity, the original pre-Christian man and his teachings. Guys, it's great to have you here. Whether you're curious about Jesus in a spiritual way or whether you come from an academic background, it is great to have you here. Um, Jesus is certainly quite a topic for discussion these days. There are more and more books out about him, more and more studies, new archaeological evidence, etc. And along with that, a, a tremendous amount of controversy. And uh, there is, you know, each of us has a tremendous amount of experience in life, and I want to acknowledge your own experiences and your spiritual search. That's important. And whether you're Christian or non-Christian, I think you'll, you'll get something out of this podcast today. Christianity has many pluses and many minuses throughout history and has been completely mixed with the person of Jesus. It is difficult to uh, take Jesus out of Christianity, to imagine Jesus without Christianity. And that's really the challenge of the podcast today. But I assure you, Jesus is for all people. He is not the property of a church, a nation, a race, anyone. He's for everybody. And what I'm going to reveal today, I think you'll find quite intriguing. So in this podcast, you're going to get a taste of the original life and teachings of Jesus. I'm going to show you how you can find the original life and teachings of Jesus using current written records. I'm going to provide you a new, liberating way to understand and evaluate Jesus and his original teachings. You'll come away with a new understanding of Jesus, the man. You'll have a new understanding of the original teachings of Jesus. You'll have a new way to experience Jesus one-to-one -one without Christianity. And most of all, you'll have a new understanding of and a new doorway to God. So I ask you when you come today, again, come with an open heart, come with an open mind, and just suspend all your judgments and assumptions that you had before and Rely on your inner spirit to tell you what's true, what isn't true. If you feel that hope, let it grow in you. If you feel new insights, accept them, consider them, go forward. It's not too good to be true. And of course, make your own decisions as you go forward today. This is going to be a little bit longer podcast, but please stay with me. I promise you it's going to be great. You're going to, you're going to get um, what you're looking for, hopefully, today. So, the first consideration in really finding Jesus before Christianity, without Christianity, is just imagining back. Let's imagine uh, 7 BC, and the first thing we realize is that he was, in his, in his time, grew up as a normal man in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. And so had the same kinds of challenges that, that we've had, period, through his life. And we know that after he died, Christianity was born. So the way that most of us are, view Jesus, most of the world does, is, of course, through the lens, through the filter of Christianity. Please understand that there are good Christians, there are bad Christians. It's a mix like any other group. 
Christianity has done a tremendous service to this world, has brought much good to this world, and is the chief proponent and spreader of truth about Jesus. And that's an amazing accomplishment, an amazing achievement. Christianity has also had a lot of problems that large organizations do. It started out, of course, um, with the preaching of Peter, later Paul, and other preachers, and it spread mainly throughout the West. It went eastward a little bit. But gradually, um, the original teachings of Jesus were altered. Um, in the initial pe- uh, preaching of Peter, and especially with Paul, if you compare those uh, later teachings with exact quotations from Jesus, there's a big difference. There is actually quite a significant difference. And that's where the problem lies. Um, Christianity then was adopted by the Roman Emperor Constantine and in a way militarized and then uh, adopted th- throughout the empire. It made it safe to be a Christian. The Middle Ages came with the darkness and the superstition and the marrying of the church to uh, kings and queens, the um, approval of kings and queens by the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, most of life was absolutely controlled, uh, regulated by the church. It was a uh, religious totalitarianism. And so people rebelled against that. And that's where much of modern materialism comes in. And then today's Christianity is very far away from what Jesus originally taught. Uh, Whether you read about sexual abuse scandals of children, misuse of money, um, the marrying of politics and religion, um, the effects have been very, very hard on Christianity. But Christianity is filled with good people, for the most part, who are seeking after God and trying to follow God. And like any large group of people, any large organization, it is subject to the problems of the concentration of power and so forth. So, again, remember that you're, most of us were trying to look at Jesus through the lens of all, that, all those problems. And so it distorted our perception of them. I mean, many people thought that he was kind of an, uh, a frail Italian-looking guy, but we know that he was, um, you know, a strong Jewish man in his time. So we got to peel back those layers to get to, uh, to, get to the, the, original, the original Jesus. And it's, it, it's, more, it's an amazing, amazing revelation. I promise you. It's much greater than what we could have imagined. In the Bible, uh, the Christian Bible, there's approximately 40 solid pages of Jesus quotes or uh, of, about the life of Jesus, uh, the Gospels. Um, if you, if you uh, took out all the duplications, it's about 40 pages. So there's so much more about his life. And oh my God, wouldn't we want to know more? So again, um, open-mindedness is the key today. I ask for your open-mindedness. Trust for the Spirit in you. Go courageously and first look at the direct quotations from Jesus in the Bible. That's um, a lot of what I'll be going off of today. But I'm also bringing in a new source of information. It's a new revelation. And that's where I'm really going to need your open mindedness to just hang on, bear with me, and keep an open mind. In 1942, a new revelation of Jesus occurred on this planet. It's called the Arantia Book. You may have heard about it. Again, keep an open mind, please. And I'm going to read some quotes and things like that and see see if it resonates with you. You can look it up online. You can get it in most bookstores. (laughs) Okay. Based on the uh, quotations from Jesus in the Bible and based upon quotations from the Arantia Book, And a lot of the Arantia book is a new revelation about the life of Jesus written by angels. This is what we know. So let me go through. What were his original teachings? First, you are a child of God. The Spirit of God is inside you. The Spirit of the Creator of the entire universe lives in you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. God loves you unconditionally. 
He forgives you for all your mistakes, all your sins, everything. And that the only thing you need in order to be part of this new spiritual experience, to discover God, is a sincere hunger for the truth and a sincere hunger to grow as a person toward perfection. And when you have that, you will realize that God is your loving Heavenly Father. God is not a man. God is not a woman. But God is a loving Father. He has created the entire universe. He protects it. He upholds it. He sustains it. He is your loving Father, Divine Father. That means we're all sisters and brothers. This is the core of what Jesus taught. And that the only thing you need to do in order to experience salvation, in order to experience the spiritual experience inside, is use your faith and believe. Accept that you are a child of God. Accept that he is your loving divine father. We are all sisters and brothers. Accept that his spirit lives within you. And by accepting, by letting your mind believe with faith, you open the door to experiencing that reality. Your life should be dedicated to doing the will of God, to grow toward life eternal. Your life is to be a life of service, not self-examination, but service to others. The point of all this is to grow toward the Father, to come home to the Heavenly Father of the entire universe. The key five critical aspects of Jesus' teachings are these. Number one, the individual is preeminent. That means that the person, the individual person, is cared for and is the priority of God, the person. Your will, number two, your will in your life is the determining factor of what you will experience and become. Your decisions, your active will. It's not a passive life. Next, you have and can have spiritual fellowship with God the Father. You can have communion with God the Father, experience of Him. And the supreme satisfactions of life our loving service to others. The last point is that the spiritual can transcend the material in your life. You can go forward. That, in a nutshell, is the original teachings of Jesus. What we've been taught, though, and what we've been told are a little bit of that, but unfortunately, people have been told that Jesus was a blood sacrifice because you are born with sin on your soul and that the only way that God can connect with you is through the blood sacrifice of an innocent person to somehow metaphysically make it possible for God to contact you, to love you. That is a very primitive belief, and that is nowhere in the teachings of Jesus, even if you just look at the Bible. It's just not supported consistently. It's completely different. It was the atonement doctrine primarily introduced by Paul. So please um, think about that. Remove it from your thinking. God is not like that. We know God is a loving, loving divine Father and is fair, and the doors are fairly open, are open for everybody with faith and a willingness to cooperate and do his will. The last thing, in addition to not needing a blood sacrifice, meaning Jesus as a blood sacrifice to know the Father, you also do not have to believe in Jesus to know the Father. But Jesus is the way to the Father. There's a little nuance there, but 
Jesus is the way to the Father, and we'll, I'll talk about that more later. So that's, those are the two profound things. Again, you were not born with sin on your soul. God is not angry, and God did not require Jesus to come down as a blood sacrifice so that he could contact you. And you don't need to believe in Jesus to be saved. But as you go in your spiritual life, you will discover him, who he is, and he becomes the way to the Father. And again, if you look at original quotations of Jesus in the Bible, and if you look at the Arantia book, you will find this is, this is true. This is consistent. The next is, well, who is Jesus? Jesus is God and man in one life. Jesus was a divine being before he came, and he chose to come to earth in order to experience life as a human being and to reveal the Father to all of us. And in doing that, he lived an incredibly beautiful life and gave us his teachings. Here's a quotation from the Arantia book, which um, I think paints a, a picture for you. Jesus enjoyed a sublime and wholehearted faith in God. He experienced the ordinary ups and downs of mortal existence, but he never religiously doubted the certainty of God's watch, care, and guidance. His faith was the outgrowth of the inside born of the activity of the divine presence, his indwelling spirit. His faith was neither traditional nor merely intellectual. It was wholly personal and purely spiritual. So, that quotation from the Arantia book, I think, is a good start. He lived a normal life. He made a living. He was with his family. He went to the marketplace. He went to the well in Nazareth. He talked to people. He played. He laughed. He was frustrated. He had challenges. He went to school. This is the normal life that Jesus had. So it wasn't that his childhood was filled with incredible, amazing miracles and so forth. Um, again, he lived a normal life. But as he was getting older, he began to realize more and more that he was the incarnation of a divine being. Here's another quotation from the Arantia book that tells us a little bit more about Jesus. Jesus spread good cheer everywhere he went. He was full of grace and truth. His associates never ceased to wonder at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. You can cultivate gracefulness, but graciousness is the aroma of friendliness which emanates from a love-saturated soul. Goodness always compels respect, but when it is devoid of grace, it often repels affection. Goodness is universally attractive only when it is gracious. Goodness is effective only when it is attractive. And so, when we look at Jesus, we see that. We see a fully balanced, actualized man. Jesus is truly a revelation of God the Father to us. When we see Jesus living his life, making his decisions, moving through the world, we are seeing exactly what God the Father would do if he were in human form. Jesus was God the Father in human form. Again, his mission was to experience life as we do, to reveal the Father and to spread his teachings. He wasn't involved with emancipating the Jewish people or starting a political movement. His mission was purely spiritual. And today, he lives on um, as a divine being. He is our father brother. He is the way to the father because he has given his spirit out, a spirit of truth that lives in our minds and prepares us to experience the spirit of the father that is also inside us. So at this point, I hope you're still with me and I hope you have an open mind. A lot of this is new and different. 
But so far, what this, what this means, the points I've made, is that, number one, um, it's real easy to know God, to start the process. It's faith. It's belief in the spirit within, belief in your universal Father. Having that hunger for truth, having that hunger to grow, which leads you to accept with full faith God within. And once you do that, then you move down the road. You are expected by God to live a life of service to others and growth. And Jesus is the Father incarnate. And he lived a life to experience it as we do and to reveal the Father and and share his teachings. So we come to one of the most dramatic events in his life, and that is his execution by the rulers. Why did this happen? People wonder. What's going on? Now, traditionally, most of us were told that Jesus needed to be executed. He was a blood sacrifice that the Father in heaven required so that it would be possible for the Father in heaven to contact us and give us all this love. That's absolutely wrong. No loving God would do that. It's just, frankly, bizarre. It doesn't make sense. It's a real primitive idea. This is the real meaning of the execution of Jesus. Jesus threatened the political authority, the economic benefits of the Jewish ruling class, period. And they combined against him, got with the Roman authorities to get him executed. That's it. Pure and simple, he was a threat to them. So, again, uh, I want to read a quote from the Arantia book that talks about the meaning of the death on the cross. Mortal man was never the property of the arch deceivers. Jesus did not die to ransom man from the clutch of the apostate rulers and fallen princes of the spheres. The Father in heaven never conceived of such crass injustice as damning a mortal soul because of the evil doing of his ancestors. Neither was the master's death on the cross a sacrifice which consisted in an effort to pay God a debt which the race of mankind had come to owe him. So that's a Urantia book quote. It's a new source of revelation. I think it makes absolute sense. I hope you do too. It just doesn't make sense to have a God like uh, the God, the way God has been portrayed. So if Jesus was not a blood sacrifice, what, what was the whole point of his death on the cross? Why did he die? Well, he had the power, he had angels to rescue him, but he was absolutely determined to live life as we do and to not escape that death on the cross. And that's what the Father's will was, for him to lead, live a genuine human life. Here is another quotation from the Arantia book about how love triumphed over all in the death of Jesus on the cross. To Jesus, mortal life had dealt its hardest cruelest, and bitterest blows. And this man met these ministrations of despair with faith, courage, and the unswerving determination to do his Father's will. Jesus met life in all its terrible reality and mastered it, even in death. He did not use religion as a release from life. The religion of Jesus does not seek to escape this life in order to enjoy the waiting bliss of another existence. The religion of Jesus provides the joy and peace of another and spiritual existence to enhance and ennoble the life which men now live in the flesh. If religion is an opiate to the people, it is not the religion of Jesus. On the cross, he refused to drink the deadening drug. And his spirit, poured out upon all flesh, is a mighty world influence which leads man upward and urges him onward. 
The spiritual forward urge is the most powerful driving force present in this world. The truth learning believer is the one progressive and aggressive soul on earth. And so when we look back on the person of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, we see that it is um, a bit unlike what we have been taught through Christianity. We need to take on a different perspective, allow ourselves to explore new sources of truth, and mainly follow the Spirit within. I encourage you to do that. Follow the Spirit within. Take some time and listen and ask that Spirit to show you the truth about Jesus, and you will eventually discover that truth. As in anything, the key is wholeheartedness. It's working as hard as you can, studying, listening, giving your heart over to this process to try to find the truth. And the best place to find that truth is within. I've made a lot of claims, a lot of assertions. I've talked about a lot of things today about Jesus, and many people would consider them quite controversial. Con- controversial. But um, it's going to be up to you to, to see what's true for you. And remember the original teachings of Jesus, that when you believe that you are a child of God, when you accept the Father's Spirit within wholeheartedly, you realize that God is your Creator, is your Father, and a perfect, loving Creator that accepts you no matter what and will give you all the help you need when you need it, in the way you need it, for as long as you need it, to help you progress spiritually. There are no middlemen of any kind. There are no special rules. All that's needed is your faith to begin, your wholehearted faith and trust in God, and you can move forward. You don't need an organization. You don't need a group. And certainly, your salvation is not based on the idea of a blood sacrifice. God, if he wants to love you, will love you, period, and does. There are no barriers. Only our willingness to listen and experience that sublime love of the Father. And that's really what the life of Jesus was all about, was revealing the love of the Father. And Jesus lives today as a divine being who has sent out his spirit, and we can use that spirit to understand his teachings better and live them better in our day and generation. We can get the confidence we need. You can feel more joy, more power to truly understand your value and destiny, to truly understand the power, the spiritual power inside you that you can exercise. Jesus is truly astounding, far beyond what we thought he could be. And because he is truly this, our loving Father, our divine Father, is more amazing now that we really understand about Jesus. So I invite you to to go out, have your own search for truth, grow, discover um, part four in the Urantia book. Discover the quotations of Jesus in the Bible. Those are going to be your best guide, and Jesus' Spirit is going to be your best guide to the truth about his life and communion with the Father within you. Please remember that the founders of the Christian religion were well-meaning and did the best they could to interpret the teachings of Jesus. Uh, They really didn't have easy to use written records when they were observing him. Much of this came to their memory after his life. So they did a remarkable job with what they have. And I am very indebted to their amazing work. And I have a Christian tradition and I am indebted to that tradition. But it is now time for us to move on as Jesus is leading us to move on to understand his true life and teachings to understand the full joy that we can only know 
by knowing and living his original teachings, that sublime life of spending time with God our Father and serving our sisters and brothers. Everybody, this has been Finding Jesus Without Christianity, the original pre-Christian man and his teachings. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please uh, put them down. Again, um, please subscribe if you haven't. I've got more that I want to provide for you. And if you know anybody who might like what I'm doing, have them subscribe as well. On my website, there's also a way to sign up for periodic um, alerts about things that I'm producing for you because I really do want to serve you as best I can. So send in your ideas and so forth. I'd be happy to uh, try to answer those questions and provide some things for you. Everybody, I will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening today. I hope it helped you on your journey. Go to findmynewlife.com for all my podcasts and much more. If you'd like to contact me with ideas or requests, use the contact me link on that website. I wish you the best on your spiritual journey. Remember, you are a child of God and we are family. You could claim an amazing destiny. See you next time.